in in all of your research and in, in, I mean obviously throughout the, the fight you've been having do you find there's one particular thing that might be a root cause um, I know there was big talk years back about soda pops and um, actually in our in our children's school up until about Oh, I'm going to say last year sometime, give or take 12 months, they actually took the soda pop machines and replaced them with water and Gatorade machines. Mm. Do, do you find when they did that, and I know they did that in the U.S., didn't they? they they've had yeah. quite a yeah, few schools. Yeah, sodas are mostly out of public schools now. Yeah, and do you find there's one particular um, substance or um, drink that, has a big impact on obesity levels? Well, you, you framed the question two ways. I think you started out asking, is there one thing that's either the cause or one thing that we would change that would be the cure? You ended with, is there one particular thing that has a big impact? I, you know, I think if you were going to single out something with a fairly big impact, it might well be soda, mm -hmm. just because it contributes a significant amount of calories and sugar to the diets of children in particular, and those calories are completely empty. There's no there's nothing of nutritional value coming along to justify them. But let's go back to the original question. Is there just one thing causing this? Is there just one thing that would cure this? Uh, the answer is absolutely not. Absolutely not. It's folly. Um, I'd also like to point out, Dan, that going from soda to Gatorade in vending machines is a lateral move. There's no improvement there. I mean, just because you call something an energy drink doesn't exonerate it of its nutritional ills. And most of those energy and sports drinks are loaded with calories and sugar. And as far as I'm concerned, you know, unless you're a football player working out intensely in the heat or riding in the Tour de France, you know, these, these things are soda in disguise. No, no average person needs them, and certainly nobody needs them from a vending machine in a school. But the, the real problem in this is, is not recognizing the big picture. I mean, this is a classic case of failing to see the forest through the trees. Okay. We have a modern environment in which physical activity is scarce and hard to get, and calories are unavoidable. We are adapted to a world where calories are scarce and hard to get and physical activity is unavoidable and that is the root cause of modern epidemic obesity other things make nominal contributions but we eat too much we do too little we're adapted to very high levels of physical activity we don't get them as a as as a rule we are adapted to scrape by with hunting and gathering and instead we are surrounded by highly processed hyper palatable glow in the dark, bet you can't eat just one kind of foods everywhere we go. Everybody I know is on the seafood diet. I see food and I eat it and we see food all the time. That's the problem. And you know, the notion that we're going to fix this by doing just one thing it, it is silly. It's really folly. And you know, it's a bit like thinking you're going to stop a flood by putting down just one sandbag. The job that needs to be done is the construction of an entire levee. Any one thing we do right is just a sandbag in the levee. And until we understand that, uh, we're going to do a lot of things wrong. We're going to think that just one thing will fix this. We're going to fail to do enough. And when we evaluate our efforts, we're going to wrest failure from the jaws of success because we're going to ask the wrong question. We're going to do one thing right and ask, are we there yet? The right question is, are we getting there? Is this contributing to the cause? Is this advancing the mission? Um, any one thing we do is just part of a comprehensive solution.